Hi, in this session, we are going to learn about the file permissions. How do we modify the file permissions? Now, in order to modify the file permissions, we have the chmod command, right? So before we learn about the chmod command, first let us uh, try to see the file permissions for the file. So let's start with the terminal out here, right? Now, I would like to display all the file contents with a long listing ls with hyphen l, right? Now you can just observe, I do have one file in the directory and long listing, it provides you a lot of information, right? In that, if you look into the first column, it is basically a 10 character string, right? Wherein the first character basically specifies the type of the file, wherein hyphen in the sense it's a regular file. Now the next nine characters here, it can be grouped into three sections. Now the first three characters represent the file permissions for the owner of the file, also called as a user. The next three characters basically represent the file permissions for the group of users belonging to the same group as the owner of the file. And the last three characters basically represent the file permissions for others, the people who are not a part of the uh, user group, right, as the same as the owner of the file. If you can just observe, this will have characters like R, W, and we can also see hyphen. Sometimes we can also see X out here, right? R represents read, W represents write, and X represents execute. So when you say read, okay, when you see this character R out here, right? Now, it means the owner of this particular file, he has the read permission of this file. He can view the contents of the file. Now, the W character here basically says that the owner has the right permission, meaning he can edit the file, he can modify the contents of the file. Now, the third character out here, which basically represents the execute permission, if you have the execute permission, it will be X, but here since we don't have X, we do have only hyphen here, it means that we cannot execute this file. When I say executable file, right, we just cannot run it like a regular C file, like how you write dot slash a dot out. We will look at it more when you start with the shell scripting, right? Okay. Now, you can just observe here, okay, uh, for user and group, we have rw hyphen, rw hyphen. For others, we have r, the second character, instead of w, we have hyphen, meaning uh, the users who are not a part of the same group as uh, the owner of the file, they can only view the content, they cannot modify the contents of the file. Now let's say you want to remove the write permission okay, from this file, you want to make it as read only. If you want to make it as read only, then you have to remove the write permission, right? So whenever you want to change the permission, we use chmod. Then after that, the option out here has three parts. It has the group or you can say, uh, for whom do you want to modify the permissions? The user or the group or the others. Next, we have the symbol representing that you are willing to add the permission or you want to remove the permission. So we have characters like plus, minus and equal to sign. The third one basically specifies that what are the permissions you want to work with. Like you want to add right or you want to remove write or read or execute those things, right? Now let us say I would like to remove the write permission for the user. For user, we use the character U. For group, we use the character G. For others, we use the character O, right? So you can just write, I want to remove. To remove, we use minus, and I want to remove only the write permission, right? After this, we specify the file name. What is the file name here? Source.txt. Done. I'd like to look into this. You can just observe the owner of the file does not have the right permission. Right? Okay. Now, let me just also tell you that what we can do and what we cannot do, okay, when we have the right permission. So first, I'd like to apply the cat command with this particular file. It is going to display the content of the file. Right? Now, I'd like to remove the read permission from the file and rerun the same command. To remove chmod user minus read the file name. Done, you can just have a look. The read permission is also removed from the user. Now I'd like to run the cat command out here. It is giving me an error stating that it's permission denied. 
because the user does not have the read permissions. So whenever you want to run the cat command to view the content of the file, right, you need to have the read permission. Or even if you want to open this file uh, through the programming, through C programs like fopen, still you need to have the read permission of the file, right? Or any text editors with VI editor or any such thing, or if you want to open the file, even then we need to have the read permission. So let me just try to show you Use, okay, opening this file with the help of VI editor, vi source.txt, and you can just observe that I'm getting an error telling that permission denied. Let me just come out of this, right? I'd like to add this read permission back. chmod u plus r source file.txt, right? So you can just write read is done. So we can also open this with the help of VI editor like this. Fine? Okay. Now, the next thing is about playing around with write permission. When you have the write permission, you can edit the file. When I say edit the file, modify the content of the file, right? So I'd like to just demonstrate cat output redirection source.txt, meaning here I'm trying to write data to the file, right? So here you can just observe that it is saying that permission denied. Please do remember cat output redirection file name, it's saying permission denied, but cat the file name.txt, there's no error. Meaning cat without output redirection, it is reading the contents and printing on the screen. But cat with output redirection, it is trying to update the contents of the file, right? The same way even if you try to use this uh, append operator, this also tries to add data to the file for which we need to have the right permission. Clear? Right. Now, let me try to open the same file in VI editor. You can just observe it is displaying the contents. At the bottom, you can observe that it is saying that it is read only, right? Okay, fine. Now let me add that write permission back. chmod u plus w, the file name dot txt, right? So ls hyphen l. Now you can even append data here, right? New content add it to file, done. You can view the contents here. And even if you open this file in any of the text editor, you can just observe it is neither saying permission denied, neither it is saying that it's read only because it has the read and the write permissions and then you can even edit the contents through this also. You can go to insert mode, we can just write hello, right? We can just save this file here and then again print this. Fine, okay, right. Now, execute one, we can see how to change the execute one, but okay, how do we run that uh, uh, file? That we'll see in the later session. Right. Now, I'd like to add the execute permissions for the user, chmod u plus x, the file name. You can just observe here, it is treating it as executable out here. And you can also observe the color of this has changed, right to green color, fine, okay. Now, the same way you can also do it for the group as well as for others. Only thing is if you want to use it for a group, we say, G, I want to remove this uh, write permission for the group. You can just see write permission will be removed only for the group, not for the owner of the file, right? ls L or you want to add the write permission and execute permission. You can uh, provide multiple permission in one shot. You can just write chmod. I'd like to write others. I would like to add up the write as well as the execute permission, right? Sorry, file name missing, so let me just give this file name. Right, okay. Now, the same way, even if you want to specify some permissions for user and group, like, we have the read permissions for the owner, group, and others. I want to remove the read permission for all. So I can write chmod. Whenever you want to remove for all, you can just write a, which basically represents u, g, and o. You can either write u, g, o, minus r, followed by your file name, and you can just observe that read permission is removed for all. And I would like to uh, remove the execute permission for all. I'll try to use, instead of u, g, o, I'll just try to write a minus r or minus x here. I would like to remove the execute permission, right? Okay, now you want to add 
for users and group, right? So you can just write uh, chmod user group. I want to add up the read permission. Clear? And there is one more option called as the equal to. We can instead of plus and minus, we can also use equal to, right? So let us try to look into the equal to sign. Now, I'd like to provide the right permission for the group. So I'll just try to write chmod group. I'll try to say equal to w, right? Followed by the file name. Now, let us try to observe the difference between this and the plus sign. Now, when I say this, okay, equal to w, what it does is it will provide the right permission, but other permission like read and execute, whatever, even if it is set, that will be unset ls hyphen l right so you can just see the read permission is removed for as a ch mode uh, i would like to provide the read permission for all so i'll just write a equal to r then i'll just try to mention this now you can just observe ls hyphen l read permission will be provided for all the owner group and others but the other permission write permissions will be taken out Right, so uh, equal to is generally used only to set at the beginning, but otherwise, if you want to only add a permission or remove a permission, you basically use the plus symbol or the minus symbol. Right, we can also use the octal representation to set the uh, file permissions, which we'll look at in the later session. Thank you.